we're back with the Opie and Anthony program. Yes, it's Whip About Wednesday, by the way. Oh, it is. It is time to promote the hell out of that. That old gag. Right. We love that old gag, though. It works nicely. Especially with the warm weather starting to hit uh, the rest of the country, finally. Yes. Except for Boston. Ben was telling me that it started snowing in Boston after we left or something of, like of that. Of course it did. And Kurt Schilling's pitching tonight, and it's going to be like 32 degrees at yeah. the ballpark. Awful. Schilling. His, um, and his ankle. Good. Have fun. I was so pissed off at the Yankees. They stunk up the joint. Sorry, I'm trying to adjust my... Uh, you're still trying to adjust crap? Yeah. Well, uh, real fast, the wow phenomenon. Like in a tube. What are you laughing at over there, Jimmy? <laughs> You're reading. Uh, Go ahead. What? Are you guys? Oh, oh, if, uh, o and A are in a hustler. Uh, in, what, what issue is this? Uh, July 2005. It was just handed to us during the commercial break. Um, I don't know when this hits newsstands because we get these ahead of time. But uh, yeah, we made Hustler Magazine, July 2005. Big right, article. Right on the co- uh, cover, it says, "Holy fuck, Opie and Anthony uncensored." And man, did they come in on a good day. We haven't done uh, a lot of naked chicks on the brand new radio show. Believe it or not. And you would think we would do more because we're uncensored now completely with this satellite radio thing. Yeah. But we've kind of backed off on it because it's, it, I don't know, it's just, we we just kind of ran out of things to do with the chicks. <laughs> but with that said, Hustler came in uh, the day we had just all-out lesbianism going on. <laughs> there is a girl right on our uh, broadcast uh, counter here just getting eaten out by another chick. Yeah, right there. I don't even remember doing this. No. This was probably like the first couple of weeks of the show, right? Yeah. But what are you laughing at? You saw a line that... Um, there's one thing where they're talking about Ant doing uh, Tony Danza, and it said, uh, Anthony impersonated the talk show so convincingly the fan thought she was actually talking to Danza. Anthony was trying to pick her up, Opie remarks, laughing, saying, Hey, you know how I get a little nervous before the show. Why don't you come back to my dressing room and relieve me? Then Anthony asked the chick if she took it in the ass. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Subtle. Uh, This isn't like an interview you see in the uh, Daily News or... uh, We're fortunate enough enough to get, get to do a lot of interviews. You're right. Well, where do you, where where else would you see? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> take, take it, it in, in the, the ass. ass. Taylor, Taylor Law. This is the day Taylor Law was in here because there's a picture of Ope. There's a picture of you guys. There's a hot picture of her and another chick kissing. Yeah. Her and another chick having oral sex. Her looking at another chick's breast. Yep. And then me and hug, like hug, hugging her and holding her leg. It's very. very That's nice. Steve C's smiling face behind those girls. Yeah. Yes, Martini Steve this makes cozy smiling face. Because you know he tells t- t- tells everybody at home, I'm not even in the same room when that kind of stuff goes on. <laughs> we have to go in and mix things and work on the editing for the show. <laughs> There's a girl tweaking nipples with a yeah. smiling Steve head right behind. Yeah. Her. Explain how they superimposed your bare face there, stupid. <laughs> He's pretty much making a lesbian sandwich. I mean, <laughs> yes. Who are you kidding, man? Look at that dumb smile on his face. <laughs> I was thinking about something else. How do I make this into a promo? Yes. <laughs> I was just thinking of what Ramon would have said had he seen this. <laughs> uh, Ramon, get the dildo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <God>. Ramon, <laughs> call Dominic Barber. <laughs> He gets really mad when we talk about yes, that. Yes, he does. Ben gave me a talking to in Boston that Steve was very pissed off. A talking to. Ben goes, you know, Steve's not happy that you said that he he stayed home because he, uh, he's trying to save his marriage. I'm like, Jesus. God, everyone has got to relax around here. Yeah. yeah. Jokes. What happened Absolutely. to having a sense of humor? Of course. <laughs> All right, well, this is cool. Yeah, it's a great article, man. I want to read the dirty stuff on the air. Because we can do that now. Dirty stuff. But uh, it's the 2005, July 2005 Hustler magazine. Yeah. And it looks like they did a pretty good job. Excellent job. All right. They talk about Tony Danza. They talk about the time John Valby was in here. Uh, they got the whole lesbian thing as the main uh, main focus with the pictures. That's they great. show us in the in the studio broadcasting. Article we can't show anybody. Huh? It's an article we can't show anybody. Why not? You taking that home to mom? Hey, Mom. Oh, they Check got, out the Hustler magazine. They got some of the good Howard stuff in here, I see, as I scan the article. Looks like the guy did a pretty good job. A thorough job. With the exception of, and comedian Jim Norton dropped in. 
Like I said, they did a great job of this article. I didn't just drop in. That's <laughs> oh. a bunch of lies. <laughs> a very, very accurate article, I must say. I, no, <laughs> it's not true at all. And I don't like the way they, they, they always quote an awful line that I do. It's like, this is the one line they quote from me. You fucking insane idiot, Norton screamed at a conspiracy theorist. Well, that makes me sound like a really talented comic. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, a very accurate article. It's not an accurate article. I happen to say some clever things sometimes. I think, you know, just, uh, I think there's just a little too much uh, Jim Norton exposure in our Hustler article. I got two <laughs> mentions. Two little uh, quotes and a picture. Please, you don't think you, that's what I was scanning the article for? You think I really speed read? <laughs> We're all like that, though. I know. I'm looking for every, a J or an N. Every article Anthony and I do, I don't give a crap what Anthony <clears throat> Anthony said. No, you just. I'm like, let, I want to see if I look good in this article. You got to count quotes. And then when Anthony and I get pissed off because then there's something I'll, I said that I that was quoted to Anthony and vice versa. Yeah. They always make that mistake. In other words, making me funnier. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, so you're going to bring this uh, home to mom? And yeah, my mom is actually very cool with this stuff. Would she be cool with page 74? Well, let me take a look at page 74, Anthony. <laughs> go to page 74, just a few pages away from our article. <laughs> All right. Whoa, wow. hey, Hustlers, 31 flavors. <laughs> it's 31 pussies through the years, from 1974 to 2004, and uh, they show the, the changing style of the snatch over... Uh, Wow, 19, 31 years. 1974, they were going uh, uh, all the, going without the hair, too, huh? 74? No, that's that's red it's hair. Reddish. It's look, a big red bush. Look at 1976. Oh, I thought that was a bruise. Oh, my God. 76 is just disgusting. Oh. Who the hell was into oral sex? It looks like an alien, wearing, an alien wearing Ralph Cramden's raccoon hat. <laughs> <laughs> look at 1989. It looks like a monkey's face. Where is that? 89? Uh... <laughs> wow! What kind of monkey is that for the people at home? Come yeah, on, Anthony, a, you know a little about everything. I believe that's a macaque. A macaque? <laughs> I think it's a macaque. Looks like a monkey's face. It, Doesn't it? 88. It looks like... You can't even see Snatch. Where's 88? That looks like... That's Snatch? That's a hatchet wound to Samuel L. Jackson's head in Pulp Fiction. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever likes hair... Is an idiot. It shave it all off. Look at it. Yep. It's just gross. What about 1987? Is the famous chew up some hubba bubba mm -hmm. and then throw it on a barbershop floor. Oh yeah. What about 1991? It's uh, it's great pubic hair for some reason. 91. Ooh, great oh, pubic wow. hair was in. That is weird. That does have a Dr. Zayas quality to it. <laughs> wow, there really aren't many attractive ones in this. 1996. Uh, the kid in play look. And look at 2000, the cleft palette box. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 2001 the, looks like a fine ebony princess. Yeah, and the looks like a wallet, <laughs> sir. And the Pearsons uh, made their appearance uh, starting in 1999 for you yep. people uh, keeping track at home. Ooh. Yeah, well, so you think this would be uh, fine to have? Laying around uh, mom's house. Well, she's thumbing through. Let's see what kind of fine publication is doing an article on my son. Well, Ooh. well, I mean, uh, wow. Well, right after our article is a, a just a massive lesbian uh, pictorial. Oh my goodness! Look at page ninety-four. All right. Look at the little picture on page ninety-four. See, I wish I'll everyone be... could play along at home, but this uh, hustler's not out yet. No. I think it hits the newsstands maybe next week or something. Ninety-four. Yeah, All you could right. probably pick up uh, any hustler and just blurt out page numbers, and believe me, there'll be something. Hey, <laughs> look, wow, look at that. You see the picture uh, of the girl there with the big black one in her mouth? Oh. Yeah. Yeah, that, wouldn't that be well, lovely? I don't, I don't think Mom's going to get to page 94. You don't think? She I think, might not want to see what type of publication? Uh, I think Mom will uh, will uh, will see uh, Hustler's 31 Flavors. I think she'll, she'll have to check out the two blondes. Going at it because mm -hmm. that's right after our article, and what's right before our article? Oh, Nicole Richie naked and Sharon Stone naked. I think they use cake icing, <clears throat> huh? I think they use like strudel icing in these pictures. We talked to the guy from Penthouse. Yeah, they do do something with that. Yeah, that's not a that's not a money shot right there. That's um. All right, well, can I, go can ahead. I tell you look, how hot this Jessica James is? Hustler's first contract girl. Wow, is she sexy? The centerfold. Oh, yeah? Yeah, real big man in the boat. Oh. oh, I love it. 
Yeah, it's too big, bro. It's not too big. It's lovely. I don't, I don't get, I don't get that. Oh God! See, you like a girl with a schlong. No, it's just a big clit. That it's, is too big. It's not. No, I don't get that. That's like her pinky sticking out. Exactly. No. No. Not, not Fantastic. Good. No. Not good. No. Anything resembling a male phallus. No, it's just the more vag, the better. That looks like a guy. <clears throat> She's really hot. Just the more vag. All right, we're going to have to scan this article to, to get the good quotes. It's got to look nice and self-contained like a chimp mouth. No. It should be fat as it should be fat like a chimp's mouth. Yeah. But but it should just be spilling out all like over the place. out of it. Like, like one over... of those Lancelot Link secret chimp shows where it's a chimp mouth, but he's smoking a cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mana. Like all an right. overflowing closet. <laughs> just stuff hanging all out of it. Like, what is that? Well, this is a nice surprise today. Hustler, yes. July 2005. We knew it was coming out soon, but uh, I didn't know we'd get an advanced mm -hmm. copy today. Look for that on your uh, your newsstand. Your newsstand? Can you actually find it on your newsstand? Yeah, is sure it you behind can. the counter? Nah. Camouflage somewhere. All right. Where were we? Because that was a nice distraction. Uh, it was something I saw quickly yesterday as we were driving away from uh, Paradise in Boston. It was uh, Kermit Guy. What the hell was his name? Frank from Jersey. Frank from Jersey, who didn't know it, but he sounded just like Kermit the Frog. He was pushing wheelchair Fred down. Uh, what what road were we on there? Mm. Boston. I don't know. Right. Yeah. What? Like Commonwealth, right? Commonwealth, yeah. He's pushing Fred, and he's he's pushing him down the street, and he's holding one of those huge Opie and Anthony signs. Right. And I guess some wind grabbed it, so he kind of let go of Fred for a second to steady the sign, and the road is crowned in a way where it kind of goes downhill into the gutter, and Fred made an abrupt right-hand turn and smashed into the curb at, right as I was driving away. I saw this scene <laughs> unfolding in front of me. The guy didn't want to lose his Ovi and Anthony sign. He released Fred, well, who he, smashed into the curb. He knows what's more important in it his life. It was the funniest goddamn thing. A stupid Ovi and Anthony away. poster is more important than a human life to Frank. Although he did clean up the, the feces that Fred left in the hotel room, which amazes me, but that doesn't seem all that right in the head uh, anyway. Well, that show was very, very uh, tough to do yesterday. Oh, we were getting some uh, really bad feedback from uh, from a whack bag, I know. A couple of people were, oh, that show stunk. It yeah, no, actually, it. it wasn't that yeah. bad. Nah, it wasn't that bad. Uh, I listened on the way home, and it wasn't that bad. I said know? if we were in that situation doing that show on a daily basis, I'd jump out the window. Oh, we wouldn't have an audience. We know that. But, but there's, you know, there's some weird shows like that that are kind of cool if they're a one-off, you know? You go in that situation and do a show. It was like an unplugged. Right. Well, because the audience was very involved and very there with the show. Well, so. Frank describing how he had to clean up wheelchair Fred's shit. Was, yeah, come on. Was in the worth Kermit the price voice. of uh, of admission there. The Kermit. And the voice. Kermit voice. Yeah, listening to the replay. Oh my God, that was <laughs> that was really funny. Yeah, like I had no clue. Let me uh, go to the phone and say hi to Greg right. in Canada, listening <laughs> to us illegally. Hey, Greg, what's up? Hey, guys, what's happening? Hey, man. How did the phone sound? Oh, actually, it sounds pretty good after all that bitched and whining. Nobody's been doing the last couple of months. I'm sure happy to hear that. Yeah, definitely. You hear me. It, it, it's a hey, new... Uh, how's, it, how's, how's our uh, little uh, uh, underrated uh, uh, comic doing over there since he was neglected? Uh, Jim Norton? That's the one. No, nah, oh, Norton's, you know, Norton's very happy. He got more exposure in this uh, article than he usually gets. Yeah, I'm, I'm, sure, I'm sure he would like more exposure. He should get more exposure. But at least they got his picture in the article and, and a few quotes. So I don't even do the interviews anymore. I just kind yeah. of play. It's not necessary. As long as the show, believe me, the show is doing well, I'm doing well. Oh, good. Well, putting you in exposure and scatological in the same uh, paragraph would be good. Anyways, uh, I was just, you guys were talking about bushes there. I heard I by the way, sir, I don't like the way you paused. You, you refuse to pause after you joke bombed. <laughs> Don't try that. Uh, anyways, little hey, throat clear. I'm a truck driver, not a comic. Timing's <laughs> not my thing, pal. All right, all right, go ahead. Unless now. I'm turning right or left. Uh, uh, Doug Stanhope was uh, somewhere a while back, and he was talking about bushes, as you guys are talking about the the hustler dealer. Yeah. And he referred to uh, oh, probably what you figured your '74 was a uh, a bird's nest full of bacon grease and a raw meat. That's the kind of pussy he likes. <laughs> Well, you know, sir, maybe maybe Doug should learn to see the value of a human being for a little more than just their cunt. <laughs> oh, there it is. Throw out the first one. 
<laughs> the first one to the general audience. Hey, we got to get Elo in here. Or yeah, did he leave they'll, his, they'll live. Or did he uh, leave yeah. for his meetings? We're getting a lot of exposure lately. Everything is starting to come together. i got to tell you. Because yeah. I'm the first one to bitch and complain and blah, blah, blah. But uh, everything seems to be coming together. The studio is going to be, you know, perfect within the next day or two. They really worked hard while we were on vacation. We got the Hustler uh, interview coming out July 2005. Very exciting. Uh, we didn't really get to talk about it yesterday, but the New York Post, which everyone picks up and reads here in New York. Well, mm. Actually, they read it all over the country because it's one of those papers that you're in a hotel in the middle of whatever, name a city. And then uh, Phoenix. Phoenix, and you go down to this little stupid store there, and they got oh. a freaking New York Post. It just yeah. goes everywhere. And we were on the back page of the sports section, the last, like, third third uh, panel or whatever of uh, uh, the sports section with a huge Opie and Anthony XM um, uh, article, not article, yes. uh, advertisement. And then I'm sitting on the uh, bowl reading my brand-new issue of Popular Mechanics magazine, Opie, and uh, there it was, an ad for... Um, XM and on the bottom uh, says uh, all the shows and I noticed Opie and Anthony down there and in much bigger print than, than usual. the other shows much bigger than usual and bigger than the Bob Edwards ah font. you're mm -hmm. you're so learning I, Elo I, I you know, saw that I'm in a, a slow learner what can I say you're <laughs> learning <laughs> you're learning yes but the ad in uh, the New York Post yesterday was amazing right on yeah. the back page you know the sports section the only, the it's only pretty part. much the uh, front the the, it, well it's the back cover but it's it's the sports section yeah yeah but the, the sad part was that I, this grossly fat uh, you know, David Ortiz showing off his World Series. Oh, I know. It's yeah. Disgusting. Yeah, a couple of people commented, nice ad for you guys right under Ortiz. Yeah, it's disgusting. Yeah, well, what are you going to do? Uh, as yep. long as you see our names and XM Satellite Radio, that's, that's all, good. all that's we care about. It's all good. Hey, uh, Ant, check, the, check out the MiFi thing, on the cover of the MiFi. Whoa. Uh, you like that? Wow, that's pretty cool. Custom I, covers? Yeah, that's the. Uh, those are new, uh, something we're kind of baiting right now where you can. Put um, decals on the cover of these MiFi's. You can put what on them? You can put like a little sticker on the cover and customize no, I'm them. Don't say it again. <laughs> decal. 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 I'm not oh going to take God. the bait. So Look, decal, see? but can, decal. Decal. Isn't that cool? Can people do this already? Uh, we're, we're talking to a bunch of different companies, but yeah. Wow, that looks great. Really so cool. there'll be uh, there'll be that'll go on any MiFi. <laughs> 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 I knew you were gearing up, Jimmy. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. yeah, you got the Yankee logo and uh, the, the, stitch, the yeah. stitchings the of ball. a baseball and, right. and, uh, and a Major League <laughs> Baseball logo. That's really cool. Uh, yeah. Oh, but you explain that this is the first portable unit? <laughs> <laughs> Nice hair, Jeff. <laughs> oh, great. But uh, See, even even uh, even we got the little s in uh, USA Today the USA bottom part there. Yeah. Nice. Mm -hmm. yep. Very good. Cranking Boy, it up. all over the place. Got to, baby. Got I like to. it. Baseball's the real deal. I like it. This must have been that 2005 stuff we were hearing it's about. All, it's all coming. It's all still coming. Yeah, yeah. and then uh, the Daily News yesterday had a huge article on the AOL XM deal. Yep. Yep. And they mentioned uh, Anthony and I, and had our had our big stupid yes. pictures, the same picture, our 1998 picture. Yeah, uh, a picture they've been using for the last uh, I don't know six or seven years yeah. with my stupid mouth open. Sure, I like that picture. It seemed like a great idea at the time, but it's it the only picture does. they use in New York when when they're talking bad or good about. Uh, well, the AOL thing last night was pretty funny. They do these huge sessions events, and down at Webster Hall, they had um, Little John and the East Side Boys and the Ying Yang Twins. So they brought so I, so I came down to see this whole thing and I brought you know Dr. Love in there Lee Abrams down so we went down to go check out this and I got to tell you I I was wearing a suit which was a mistake uh oh and it was this entire rap show and I have never felt more white and out of place in my entire life and I'm a 34 year old guy so I'm like a young kid and it's like I should be not this disconnect, disconnected in the world but <laughs> it was uh, I've never been to a rap show so it was pretty frightening you are a corporate guy with your suit at, at a, a rap show at a rap show with, and I've got a great photo with little John he's got the you know the shark teeth yeah. and play, it's just he's uh -huh. crazy so. You must I, I, you think I really look out of place? Out of what do you play. think? What do you think about Einstein in there? You know, Lee Abrams. Yeah, yeah, but at least well, he, Lee kind of has a freakish least, look, though. At least you know, he's on like, some kind yeah. of dope or something. Yeah. So, so the rap guys can like they can know, he can relate. They'll look yeah, in his eyes and just know he's you know one with them. Yeah, yeah, that's of right. Of course, that's right. But I'm thinking nobody right. bothered you though. They probably figured you were a lawyer, an entertainment rep, or something like that. Right. That because that's what the entertainment reps look like. A bunch of white guys in suits. That's true. That's what I was. That's why you know I'm sticking to that story. Absolutely. The new slave master. Well, I'm glad you're back in the suit. So Elo, yeah, Elo we're, we have you in here because you got to explain the AOL deal. Sure. It's just amazing. Yeah. 
It's the, proven that we picked the right company. I absolutely. Think. Yes. At, well, the, the the fundamentals of this one really are simple. Is that you take AOL Radio and they have this giant portal and they've got 22 million. By the way, I, yep. I, I I listen to the AOL Radio channels all the time. Yeah, they're I great. I can't get enough. They're great. Of, uh, so what they're, of, we're of basically that. marrying our, our our music channels with their music channels, and mm -hmm. we're putting the music channels together. We're putting them uh, on a portal where people can go to AOLmusic.com. It's going to launch sometime in the mid part of July, and uh, people will be able to subscribe. There's going to be a free service where they're going to get you know 10 to 15 of the XM music channels for free and some of the AOL music channels for free. Then there's a premium service that's kind of an upsell so that if you're not a <clears throat> full-blown subscriber to AOL, you can get that, but you're also going to get all the XM music channels as well too. And then we're going to take a lot of the AOL content uh, like sessions and some of their uh, other things that they do, and we're going to put that on the uh, XM platform through a lot of our channels, and we're going to take some of our artist confidentials and we're going to push it that way. So it's a really good, as we like to say, the buzzword is synergy. Synergy. Well, telling, you like that? <laughs> I, I, I was telling Anthony recently, I, AOL has made a huge comeback yeah. in, my, in my life. I mean, uh, the broadband stuff they're yes. doing, it's just amazing. And uh, I'm using it to sh you know, show prep for the radio program. I love the, uh, I mean, I use the broadband client all the time. Yeah, it's for a while I was I was done with AOL. I was ready to get rid of the service. But yep. then the broadband stuff hit, and then these radio, cha you know, these channels, uh, the radio stations you could listen to, it's, yep. I'm, I'm back in big time. Yeah, I don't mean to kill the mood in the room, but while you guys are congratulating yourselves, Sirius has just run out and signed a deal with Commodore 64. <laughs> <laughs> Every time you buy a computer, Sirius sends you a unit, and you have to guess which one weighs more. <laughs> the Sirius unit does, without a doubt. So no, but it's great. It's uh, it's you know, it's a, it's a great. I mean, listen, everything that's going on, and people were, you know, there was a lot of things that people were saying about, you know, what are you guys gonna do? You know, they got, you know, NFL and all this other crap. You know, and we kept saying the whole time, it's like, just wait till baseball season gets here. And the only thing that I hear from anybody these days is, you know, they're buying the radios, they have the MiFi's. We have all of our marketing deals for baseball, by the way, that are in all the stadiums, like Yankee mm -hmm. Stadium and Shea and all these other things. People are people are buying the service for baseball. And the AOL thing basically positions us on the online space as, you know, again, you know, a leadership position again from the online music space. So what about um, there's something very important as far as the deal goes, especially you know, Major League Baseball. What about getting me Yankee tickets? I can do that. Is there a way to get me <laughs> Yankee tickets? There's a there's a there's a because very easy way. It's about me. You do realize we were in Boston for opening day, right? I heard Someone that. must have told you. <laughs> I know. It's been a real I, tough. Do you realize I, uh, I signed some POs that said that you were there? I so I knew. I do. Yeah. I, there's do a you rule. realize that we sacrificed a, an, uh, a good broadcast by staying in Boston an extra day because we just assumed, stupid us, that we would be going to the game. <laughs> we would Monday be going night? to the game. Well, that's the only reason we <laughs> ended up uh, broadcasting in a club in front of 20 people. <laughs> yeah. We knew it was going to be a disaster the next day, but it was about Anthony and I getting tickets to opening day. Socks, yes. A little selfish of us. We thinking, just assume you know, we that's sacrifice when, that's what, the show. You know, you got you got you got to call. You got to hit Elo on the phone. You got to call. Let's him. be honest. We're your top stars. You got Major League Absolutely. Baseball. It, th to me, it was a no-brainer. Well, I call makes, it a no-brainer. It makes you feel any better. Bob Edwards didn't get tickets. I was going to so. say I was watching the game and saw him catch a foul ball. <laughs> <laughs> He's right there. <laughs> they didn't Come need on. to give him tickets. They just put him in Shea Stadium in the cart. And they said, "All right, just drive around the field." <laughs> Do you realize that after Monday's great broadcast, we all went back to our hotel rooms and were very lonely the rest of the night, just uh, just eating food? I don't buy the fact that Norton was lonely yeah. the rest of the night. So. No, I spent a little bit of money. Yeah, it was shocking. <laughs> well, we had to wait for Ben. Ben's the most unconnected man in Boston. The most unconnected, connected guy. He's unbelievable. He knows everybody in Boston, according to him. Well, apparently not anybody at any restaurant. <laughs> yeah. We learned that. We walked into a restaurant that I think he owns. Uh, ben said he owns, owns this place. I don't know. So uh, we go in there. They kind of look around like, well, we're kind of in between lunch and dinner. And they hand us a pamphlet with some, some food written on it. It was like, well, this is what we can give you. It's like, no, thank you. We're leaving. It's the in-between menu. How about the oh. call from Ben going... Give these guys whatever they want. Yep. Open the kitchen for them. A little table in the back. But that happens in New York all the time, too. It's the in-between menu. Yeah, but it's you, the know, if thing you know that, somebody, that goes on. they'll hook you up. Right. Yeah. Believe me, the food's still back there in the kitchen. <laughs> the ovens are all on. They can make something. I'm just still surprised that we jumped in that van after the show. Oh, fan of the show. Well, how do we know? He was driving a big van. It was like a big... Uh, airport van that you take, you know, you take. But well, we uh, didn't even question it. Hey guys, I'm a fan of the show. We all just jumped in. What was he gonna do? Rape us each individually? <laughs> no. While we wait and go, oh my God, am I next? <laughs> he's the guy, you know, he's pretty powerless to do anything. Let's do that or walk back to the hotel because yeah. we get the the special treatment from XM. 
Oh, another thing, right, the, the vehicles. For yeah, some what reason, sh- no rides were really set up for us. We didn't have any, any rides set up. We had a horse in a buggy set Was up. that it? Yeah, I don't know well, what happened. That would have been a plus. <laughs> Instead, we have to hop in with Stavros, the child rapist, <laughs> driving us around in a van, 500 pounds, just sweating and glancing in the rearview mirror. And then he took the long <laughs> he way He took the around long way so he could hang with us. Just to hang out with us longer. It's got to make you feel loved, though. Because oh. Anthony and I know Boston you know, well, relatively why well. Why is he going this but, way? Like, why is he going all the oh, way he around? He wants to hang out longer. He wants to tell his friends, yeah, no, they were in there for quite a while. <laughs> well, you you know, it's funny. I was, I was just, re- you brought up the AOL thing. Remember when uh, I was here about three weeks ago, and I came up here, and Hugo was here, and we were all here, and you kept, you guys kept saying, something's happening. Oh, oh AOL? Well, that's the there, deal? I, I, I got to come clean. Got to come clean. never you fess go. up when it's going down Well, like that. you know what? It's, it's, uh, you got to buy stock today, because I oh. figured something else out. Why? Well, I saw him at 6 o'clock, and I'm like, oh, Elo came back because it's our first day back from vacation. We got the studio that's been tweaked for the last two and a half weeks. That's why I'm here. He but really cares about Opie and Anthony. He's in town to make another big another deal. Another deal? You think Lee Abrams would be here to hang with us? Lee, what are you doing here? Hanging with you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there's something going on. So there's another something right. going on. There's always something going on. Get online, Anthony. Buy me some shares Ooh, right now. Get on E-Trade. <laughs> Right now, and, and he uh, makes believe he's really here for us. I'm like, I saw I, it right I, through it. I am here for you. Ask Wiki. I told Wiki, I said, I'll be here. Don't tell him. I want to surprise him. His first day back in the studio. Yeah. We're, you know, off of the premium tier. We're on the basic. The whole world can hear us. 3.7 million people have a chance to hear the virus now, so it's a beautiful thing. I'm not usually late on a daily basis either, boss. Yeah. I was going to, you know, oh, yeah, I, I saw you. I saw shows you. shows up, and I'm late. I yeah. saw you walk in, and I was going to say hi. I went, oh, no. Now, he's Wait, actually well, late every day. I'm the responsible one. I'm so glad you finally got to see it for yourself. I saw it with my own two eyes. Isn't that great? The boss is here one day, and it's the day I'm completely late. I, like I'm I, strolling in as our opening music is playing. And I'm I'm deep in preparing for the show. I got newspapers all around I've me. I've been here coffee. for hours. Hope's got his shoes off. I, and I, Norton's barking out orders. I'm like, well, this is not what I thought happened at 6 a.m. I'm strolling Everybody in. Everybody strolls in as uh, Ecstasy of Gold it's is playing. finishing. <laughs> yeah, finishing. I'm like, Thank God you finally noticed who's really in charge here, Elo. Yeah, that looked uh, really bad for me right there. It's all good. <laughs> and, and the AOL thing, are they going to be able to hear Anthony and I? You know, that's one of the things we're working on today. There's meetings today. So oh! There's uh-oh. meetings today. That means no. No, no, no. no. It doesn't mean no at all. they're petrified no, no. of us. Yeah. No, no, trust me. If we're petrified of you, they're... Not you guys. No, no, no. AOL. No, I don't, you yeah. know, it's, a mu- it's more of a music deal, and it's really focused mm-hmm. on the music portal. Um, but all of our streaming <laughs> and all of our radio online stuff that we have with the ONA online and uh, everything else is still still there. So yeah. It's all good. All right. It's a beautiful thing, guys. Well, it's a beautiful thing, and I'm glad to see the studio is in tip-top shape. It's getting there. Yeah, it I is. must say I'm I'm happier with the uh, yeah. headphone situation. You, you sound great to me now, and yeah, you oh. see our hustler interview. I, you know, I yeah, just got how about that? Huh? Is the I, company very proud of I, this one? I am. I can't wait to take it back. I especially love. Uh, I especially love the two girls on the table. That was yeah, nice. You think, yeah, that's a good one, huh? Yeah, this is really going to help Hugo. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is really going to help Hugo's impression of us yeah. as he tries to sell us to the stockholders. Yeah, it's like this is a show that's going toward the future. This is a yeah. pop culture show. You know how many times I've told Hugh Panero personally that we're trying to get away from uh, the naked chicks? They're steering that, away from that And the shocking thing. stuff. And, <laughs> and the only picture they got in our Hustler interview is one girl eating out another girl. <laughs> but it's Hustler. you got to tell... <laughs> but I, but I love the face you that you have you watching the two girls e- eat each other out in the back. Oh, no, that's yeah. uh, that's Martini Steve. Oh, Steve. Yeah. Yep, that's oh, Steve. That's Steve. And then, of course, you got Norton's photo over on the right, which is really nice. Oh, too. then we got Stupid Bob Kelly in this other photo. I didn't oh, is Bob that. in that one? Yeah. Oh, is that him, that unshaven idiot? Yeah. There you go. <laughs> oh, yeah, he is in the back just lurking and looking. There's another one who's got some explaining to do when he gets home. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Really? I'm never in studio when that stuff happens. Yeah, look at you, stupid. Oh, there it is. Oh, <laughs> yeah. oh, right. Ready to do a colonoscopy. <laughs> He's in print. <laughs> hey, Lee, it was nice talking to you, buddy. Hey, great to meet you. Hey, Lee, do you need to bring the show? <laughs> 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 Lee just sitting there nodding off. No. That's good. No? no, I'm enjoying every yeah. minute of it. Lee, I want you to be very honest. Yes. We're gonna, we're gonna, I'm going to put you on the spot here. Uh-oh. How annoying was Jim Norton as far as the Robert Plant picture goes? <laughs> Don't hold back. Uh, and okay. I guarantee you, know, all due respect to his tenacity in uh, acquiring a photograph, tenacity. It was uh, yeah. it was unbelievable. I've never seen anything like it. Probably, well, it was back in the late '60s. <laughs> someone who really, really wanted to meet Hendrix. I think it was yeah. uh, '67. That's comparable, right? That was comparable. That, but that since then, died. nothing like Jimmy trying to get this it was picture unbelievable. Of Robert Plant. 
It was absolutely unbelievable. The the vicious tenacity, the intensity. <laughs> that sounds the better than just calling him a, a nudge. I was a nudge. I'll admit that. Oh, it's ridiculous. Nudge. But the photo is scary. Mm -hmm. You've seen it. Oh, it's yeah. horrible. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's classic. I've got it on my trio right now. The little it's smiling a, faces. His little lock over my face. Yeah, Ugh. the hair is touching your face. Little men just smiling. His head is Huge as big head. as a pumpkin. It really is awful. I've never seen a bigger <laughs> head in my life. But you have to do it that way to get Robert Plant. You have to do it that way. He, Lee even said he's a tough one. His people are very protective. He's a very tough one to get. You have to. But Lee's a very important man, and he had a lot to do that day. And, and you I didn't would just care. pop in and ask You didn't care about everything else he needed to take care of that day. Now, well, I do want you to know... Just went in there and said, "Look, you know, I know we got a performance here, and this is a it's a big deal. Robert's, you know, a rock god. We got to do this Norton thing, yeah. or the deal's off. Or the deal is <laughs> off. We <laughs> came Norton so needs close a picture. to the whole show being scrubbed. Yeah, a very upset Robert Plant leaving his band, sulking, moving away, management and label freaking out because of Norton. So at the last yeah. minute, Robert said, "Well, we've got to do this." And he agreed. And the picture was taken. Uh, yes, it looks uh, great. And I understand Paul McCartney is stopping in at one point, possibly. Well, that, you know, it's interesting. We're talking to the McCartney people, and one of the conditions is a photo with you. Right. <laughs> and and sheet. You he, better yeah. be there for that one. Okay, you know, that's, that's actually critical to any... Uh, and all, you know, all the artists are coming to us now that we're big and popular and getting bigger all the time, and it's interesting how the Norton factor uh, is a key ingredient in no all the negotiation. No negotiation, boy. I hear a, Jimmy is demanding that they find a crosswalk uh, to take the McCartney picture. Is that true? <laughs> <laughs> and you're making him take his shoes off. And, yeah. and he said, no, I don't want to be a pain in the him. ass, but uh, Paul, take your shoes off. Yeah. Walk with me onto this crosswalk. Yeah. Wonderful. As a matter of fact, I understand. Uh, they might want you on the cover of the next Plant record. Oh, be happy to be a yeah. part of that. Part of Nude, it. crawling on rocks. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, the creative hasn't been much. figured out. But, <laughs> oh. I can I, need, I can see the photoshopping as we speak <laughs> on whackbag.com. <laughs> oh, yeah, for the new listeners, great. there's a great uh, message board. It's uh, whackbag.com, yeah. and they got a photoshop. You know, section that, uh, it's just classic just every day. just take what they hear on the show here and Photoshop it. Sure. Make, they give it a little visual. It's I love pretty it. funny. All right. So what's the next big deal? Uh, there's really nothing in the works. Come on, yeah. give us a little something-something. There's, uh, there's nothing in the works. There's always something, there's always in, the something works, in the works. But he's good. Well, there's the Norton Plant thing. Well, yeah. We, I mean, there's we, that. We know that. Yeah. yeah. Obvious marriage. All right. No, it's, uh, but, you know, the, uh, it's, uh, no, the all right, man. All right. <laughs> yeah, all right. It's, it's all right. <laughs> it's good. It's good. All right. What, what is the, the OP usually says? Oh, we're going to let you be. Yeah, <laughs> yeah let you be. <laughs> we're going to let you be. I'm sure you're pretty busy. <laughs> Guys. Uh, this is another OP classic. Yeah, so they're saying we got to get you out of here. Yeah. <laughs> I said, nobody leaned in and said anything to you. When are they saying this? They pipe it into your headphones? <laughs> Look, we know you'd love to talk, but we got to get him out of here. Yeah. on that screen he looks at. I know. <laughs> I love when he does that to a, someone I've brought into the show. He's like, well, they're saying we got to let you out of here. Here and the guys what? Like, oh, oh, you know, there's so I'm many things. Greg Charles. The, pro the problem you have is that Lee and I are doing so many things, we forget who's in the loop. Mm -hmm. So you just get outside of when it's not like Lee and I, we just don't talk to people. Yeah, we just like walk in. We, even even at XM, thing. we don't even speak to people. It's like very secretive. What's going XM. on? Hmm. Hey, you know, I, I want to play you guys something. Oh, you know what? Incidentally, uh -huh. I, I think we have an NDA on this, but I, I'm, I don't know. <laughs> Do you want an NDA? We are looking right? at acquiring Cleveland, though. <laughs> that could be good. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, you got to keep that quiet. You know, on vacation, I was uh, debating if I should start smoking pot again. I'll get into it later. I was I was really debating. Why not? And now well, you I were in the perfect <laughs> atmosphere. Yeah, I was, I was in the Bahamas. And I, I, I haven't smoked pot in probably a decade. But I was debating. I think I might go back to smoking pot. And now after talking to Lee, I'm, I'm oh, there. there. Yeah. Get I'm there. a case of glaucoma and it's all legal and everything. <laughs> I'm there. <laughs> Or you could have been you could have been at the Little John show last night, like Lee and I were. There was plenty of that there. I felt Contact. so white. Did you? Oh. Yeah. Well, you are. So. <laughs> well, <laughs> and, exactly. yeah. and you should be grateful. <laughs> yeah. oh, so you man. felt out of place one night. Who cares? Yeah, really. <laughs> now I know how the, those old folks felt at that '69 Pink Floyd show. Oh, you were there as a kid, and <laughs> yeah, I was. It's to come some old people there. And look at yeah, look at those old yeah. people. And, I went to uh, a, a Who show a couple of years back. And it was just like, wow, because I remember going to see The Who in high school. And, you know, it was really rocking and the, the crowd jumping around like maniacs. And then you, you go now and it's just, oh, my God, so many skullets. Yeah, oh. You get the skull mullet <laughs> going and just these guys that broke out the uh, the jean jacket with the Who album oh. cover painted on the back. Oh. And it, their big guts hanging oh. out of the front of it. 
Did you see uh, Daltrey? Yeah. I think it was on one of those VH1 type channels. How mm. he will reunite the Who as long as he gets uh, Norton involved. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> gotta be Norton must <laughs> be involved in some way. I'm not a big Who fan, to be very honest. No, he's well, not. No, that's well, the problem. Said, very overrated. Yeah, yeah, of course, overrated. Now of that course you cannot are, be a Who fan, but to say they're overrated is ridiculous. I thought they were. They were one of the hugest oh. bands. They, absolutely, they, like, they were. The who's, who's next? One of the greatest albums ever made. The Who sellout. You know, one of those. Gems. You ever listen to that one? It's no. Oh, see, most people have it. Tommy the <laughs> Rock <laughs> Opera. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's a little the who different. Sell out. But great. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> all right. <laughs> for all the new listeners, it. the only reason he's saying this is because it doesn't involve Ozzy Osbourne. That's not true. His I, I, hero and lover. I happen to uh, involve. I open myself up to a lot of new music. I, I'm. More very than you think. I love Bob Marley. I love Sabbath. I love a lot of weird things. Johnny Cash. But I just think the Who was got through overrated. one what? one other person before Besides, he brought up something Sabbath. with Ozzy. Right. Sabbath. Sabbath. Well, I had, Bob Marley. Right. Oh, Sabbath. Did I mention Ozzy? Johnny Cash. Oh, if I, I didn't say that, they would have done it. So I any had alive guys you like? What's that? Any living guys you like? Yeah. Not many. No. no. I mean, I just think the Who was overrated. <laughs> any living people? <laughs> What's some other other big songs that they they, they did? I mean, I know they had some. Uh, who are you? No, no, that's, who, that's who, a cheesy. Who, 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 Yuck. How about I can see for miles. <laughs> what about the magic bus? Uh, My generation, call me lightning. Uh, My generation was an all right. So what, what exactly? Yeah, you're not. Uh, well, they were they're a good band. I'm not saying they were bad band. A good band. He's all on the hook. Right. Oh, yeah. He's putting them in the same category as like strawberry alarm clock. <laughs> no, no, no. Look, I those guys rock. Did you, did you ever hear <laughs> the true story about the strawberry of alarm course. clock? Of course. He's got a strawberry alarm no, clock story. True. Okay, they came out in 67, 68 when, you know, mm. you know, bands like The Who and Jethro Tull and Zeppelin and all of them were emerging. And uh, the management of the strawberry alarm clock felt that they weren't being taken seriously. Yeah, they were of course. kind of a pop band, but they really wanted to be hip, underground, acid rock and all that. So the manager planted pot in their amplifiers, called the police in Champaign, Illinois, had them busted, <laughs> figuring that it would be this huge headline, right. the strawberry alarm clock are druggies, and it would be great for their credibility. Obviously, it didn't work. But, um, oh, it didn't did get the press that they needed? No. They ended up fighting. They did get arrested, though? They did get arrested, and they broke up. and They got arrested, and no one cared. <laughs> Actually, uh, inc an incense of peppermints. You know, the, uh, the, the, I think this is true. The real singer was so out of it that they had to get some other guy to sing the song. He's not the real Strawberry Alarm Clock singer. So if you listen to Singing Tomorrow... Singing on the record? Yeah. So the only hit they had, hit. someone else sang? Uh-huh. Of course, they did have Tomorrow and uh, Sit oh. with the Guru, which were... Uh, you are good, man. Yeah, relax with knows deep everything. Tracks. Deep Crack track and Strawberry <laughs> Alarm Clock. Wow. <laughs> I want to wind him up. I, I want to listen to Deep Track so bad, but I... I it, wow. You go so deep. Oh, my God. Well, that's that why we have oh, top tracks for all your favorites. I yes. understand. If you go back to your comment about doing pot again, right. then you go to deep tracks. And you're that's fine. true. Smoke the pot, go to deep <laughs> tracks. You'll be like, why Whoa. are they going if so it's, shallow? If it's really good pot, you go to fine tuning. Fine tuning? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Only for the quality, but. <laughs> Programming for pot. That's great. Well, duh. Look at so a little. Okay. Yeah, this is good stuff. <laughs> There's a whole marketing angle here I didn't even think of. <laughs> I've only smoked once under the supervision of a doctor. Yeah. That's great. Okay. Well, that must have been some pot because it's still hitting you. <laughs> <laughs> That's good stuff. Actually. He's had refills for 20 years. <laughs> Very good. Well, gentlemen, um, we're getting a sign from outside that you have to go. Well, I want to play so, him something. Well, where, do you, where do they have to go? Where are we going? <laughs> yeah, who's, who's telling Eric Logan he's got to go? He's the boss. Oh, Elo has things to do. Uh, I want to play him something, though. I want to hear it. You know, we, we were talking about marketing and, uh, you know, mm. commercials for the Opie and Anthony show and sure. XM Satellite Radio, and I, I found a little something for everybody. Yeah. yeah. Ooh. If you're planning a road trip this weekend, it's time to take XM Satellite Radio along for the ride. XM gives you 100% commercial-free music. It's the ultimate playlist with channels for album rock, alternative, heavy metal, hip-hop, unsigned bands, blues, jazz. There's an XM channel for everyone in the family, including the biggest names in news, sports, talk, and comedy. All in digital quality sound for less than 10 bucks a month. 
No wonder it's the most listened to satellite there radio service. The XM Roadie from Delphi can turn any radio into an XM radio. <laughs> it's the smallest satellite radio ever, so it looks great on your dashboard. <laughs> Plus, for a limited time, you'll also get a free home kit, so you can connect oh. XM to any home stereo. XM makes a great graduation or Father's Day gift. Check it out. Electronic stores, including Best Buy and Circuit City. Beyond AM, Beyond FM, it's XM Satellite Radio. Oh, Thank you, it. Howard. I wow. That's beautiful. <laughs> Isn't that, that Mark St. John from K108? <laughs> that is beautiful. That's Beyond great. AM, Beyond <laughs> FM, it's XM Satellite <laughs> Radio. No wonder it's the most listened to satellite radio service. <laughs> that is priceless. Oh, and it's, not, and it's not even you. It's not no, even you, Ed. that is... Uh, that is the voice <laughs> of Howie. That wow. is classic. He, he knows it's the better... Absolutely. Uh, he knows it's the better service. He just didn't want to come here because of Ant and I, and now That's he's going to suffer great. because of it. Oh, uh, he has no idea. <laughs> he has no clue what he has signed up for. I, I can't begin to tell you the number of people who have tried to do deals or done things with them, who picked up the phone and called us and said... What are they? How in the world are they going to catch up? I, I mean, they yeah. just you know, it, it, there's just no way. And you know, when you go from the base that 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 we have, and you look at where he's going, he, yeah. it, the anxiety is starting to go up with each passing day. Well, it's going to be a uh, it's going to be a tough uh, tough ride over yeah. there. Screw him. Is Hyundai a big car? Is Hyundai a big car? Yes, yeah, it's, it's a right. huge car. Okay, cool. Yeah. No, it's yeah. and it's great. And the thing about the Hyundai deal is that it's standard. You know, it's going to be in every Hyundai is standard equipment, which is mm -hmm. a huge. The first time that any of our automotive partners have done that. So it's like an infomercial. It is. Hey, what well, do you just wind Isn't me it? up? You know, I just know I got the talking points. You call within the next ten minutes. <laughs> Elo will send. We'll send you a Shemplig. <laughs> <laughs> I've got some Yankee tickets I'll give away. So oh, you know. there you go. I, I also I, need Mets tickets. Mets tickets too? Yeah, they're right by my house. Why would you go it's to a see short the Mets? Drive. I like the it's Mets. Like a, they're like the cute younger, retarded younger brother. I was gonna say it's like it's like the Yankees with Down syndrome. Yeah, it is. it is. It pretty much is. You go there and you're like, oh, they're trying. Yeah, it's like a T-ball team. Yeah, team. Ball. <laughs> I, I, I they tee up the ball. And I go to Shea Stadium and it just disgusts me. It's it's a, really. I hate it. It's, it's the worst. It's stadium. the worst stadium in the world. I mean, yeah. I'd rather go to the. I, you know, I'd rather go to see the Devil Rays play in a Ugh. concrete muffin in St. Petersburg with four people than go sit in Shea Stadium. Really it's horrible. I hate it. I don't it. know. Wow! Don't like the Mets. Don't like. First of all, Pedro's there, and I still can't get over that. Yeah, you know, he ain't the fro. But you had a little problem they had. They had to uh, postpone the game for a little while because uh, they have, I guess, one of those big video billboards at Shea Stadium, and um, it's usually black when the the batters are up, so it's not distracting them. And uh, they had a big picture of Pedro up there, and they couldn't get it off. <laughs> <laughs> and they had to postpone the game until they could do that. And I guess Pedro was having a good time in the dugout with that, and the fans were having a good time with it. But he's a great addition to the team, yeah, I think. Yeah, sure. Although I do like Willie. So. But how about those Chicago White Sox? Oh, please. First place. <laughs> Another awful stadium. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, the old Comiskey. Yes, the old stadium. That's awful. Lee has so many stories. Oh, oh. my God. Forget about it. Yeah. You know, that's been everywhere. It's been everything. Old Comiskey, Disco Demolition. That's, I was going to say, Disco, disco Demolition. With Steve Dahl. Yeah, uh, legendary. One of yeah. the great moments in broadcasting and baseball. That is what not to do at a promotion. Yep. Oh, one that's great. One of the great. classic what not to do. What did he do? Oh, you know a the story? He oh started. my God! I've, I've heard it, but I don't remember it. Did, Lee was like the architect of this thing. When? Oh wait, you were part of that deal? Oh God, yeah. Did you not know that? I this had was no the, clue. This was the guy who this the background behind. Everybody gives Steve Dahl the credit. It was Lee's deal. It started with. <laughs> Steve, I got an idea. <laughs> it was one of the most remarkable events in uh, broadcasting history. In a nutshell, uh, the anti-disco movement was in full force back then, mm -hmm. and uh, the radio station at the time decided as a uh, decided as a strategy, we're going to take the anti-disco stand. And on the air, Steve Dahl would blow up disco records every morning, uh, you know. Uh, and then, um, to make a long story short. Worked a deal with the Chicago White Sox, um, and everybody brought uh, a disco record in 98 cents and got into a double, finite double header with the Tigers. And there were like 60,000 people inside, 60,000 outside, all just like nickel beer night, rock and roll, earth dogs, <laughs> all listen there. The, listen to the who, you know. Hey, a lot of who records. A lot of who records. Lot of going records on, yeah. Eight tracks. <laughs> there was no, no interest in the game. <laughs> And anyway, uh, so uh, uh, the between games, 
uh, all of the records that were collected were carried out into center field, piled up in this huge stack. It was a huge pile. I've oh, seen the video. Oh, it was massive. Yeah. And the Army Corps of Engineers, uh, demolition experts who were brought in for this. <laughs> How do you, you know, get away with this? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, the Sox needed anything to get a crowd. Um, and they, they wound the whole uh, pile with uh, explosives. And on comes from the uh, from the bullpen, Steve Dahl with this babe. You know, a lot of stations had chickens for mascots. This station had a, Easy. a girl. Uh, and it was, at the time, it was very effective. Um, <laughs> anyway, they come out in a Jeep with a loop flag, which is a station which has gone downhill since then, but it was great then. And a, uh, a Chicago city of Chicago flag, a White Sox flag. And an American flag, and it was just all everybody in military came out, oh and Dahl goes on with a huge, uh, you know, PA system. You know, attention, attention, you know, welcome. And uh, they counted down from ten, nine, and it's on the scoreboard. Ten, nine, eight, three, two, one, boom! And this mushroom cloud of disco <laughs> records, and then the crowd was smashed by this time. <laughs> just goes out. It was a complete riot. It was, you've never, it was like Beirut. It was unbelievable. They just the, uh, stormed the field, right? Stormed field, took over everything, stole bases, <laughs> and it was just unbelievable. It was God so bad, criminals. they canceled the second game, and then for the next week, it was great. You know, just all these, you know... Um, you know, one guy from the White, White Sox was saying, how could they do this to my music? You know, some guy from the Dominican Republic was very upset about oh. it. Then other guys from the same team, you know, about time somebody did this. Uh, there were these point-counterpoint shows on all the news programs, you know. Uh, Is radio going too far? <laughs> well, Steve Dahl had a great line when he was uh, Bill Veck, who owned the team at the time, said, you know, uh, how could you do this to baseball? I said, Bill, you haven't had 60,000 st- people in that stadium since you won the series in 59. Uh, okay. And um, But it was unbelievable. Then, for the next several weeks, the station would get these boxes. You'd open the box, be a big boombox smashed to shreds with a letter, Dear Steve, found some asshole listening to disco, kicked the shit out of him, here's the result. <laughs> oh, God. It was getting a little out of hand. And then there were these anti-disco rallies where they'd take it to different clubs, and you'd start in a location, and uh, you know, be broadcast, join us. It'd be like 6,000 cars going to parking lots of discos, blowing up records. It was unbelievable, and the ratings went from a, a point nine to a seven three, number one, and and it looked at the rating diaries, you know, when uh, when people fill in the rating books, they have comments, and it was just you know, uh, disco sucks and long live Steve Dahl, and, and uh, so really it, it was a statement, but yeah, people uh, really it was, hated. I mean, I remember growing still in up, the, record and, books. Yeah, the whole disco thing was just oh, you you couldn't hate a music more. It was 180 degrees. Rock and roll represented long hair. Disco was short hair. Rock and roll was sweaty, you know, overalls. Disco was, you got to look good. Rock and roll was going to festival seating, you know. The disco was, oh, wait, you don't look good enough. You can't get in. Rock and roll was all about sweating drummers. Disco was drum machines. Rock and roll was guitars. Mm-hmm. Disco, it was just 180 degrees. It was like, you know, the Israeli-Palestinian issue. It was just. You know, they would never come together. So, station now, there's an side. analogy I've not heard. I know. Yeah, he's this. Disco, Israeli, Palestinian. <laughs> I never think you'd hear that in a sentence, would you? And it really did suck. Right. And it did suck, indeed. <laughs> so Steve Dahl was like really popular back then. He was huge. Yeah, he was. Uh, you know, he was like, yeah, massive. Yeah. Rumor has it Howard stole a lot of his, uh, a lot of his stuff. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, it's uh, possible. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Supposedly, Steve, Steve Dahl was doing the lesbian thing way before Howard and oh, all sorts of things. He originated all that stuff. It's funny. Uh, I mean, the problem with Steve Dahl, he just didn't do it that well, or he would have been a lot bigger. Well, I think he. Uh, I mean, he had sidetracked. It. Huh? Sidetracked. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah, that was the problem just, with him. Yeah, because he was a very guy. he was a very creative uh, radio guy that did a lot of this stuff way before Howard. And then Howard, of course, you know, claiming that he invented everything. Who, who, who? I don't know. But there's a lot of people that will come have come forward over the years and said that Howard. You know, was getting tapes of Steve Dahl's show in Chicago, and then uh, well, here's something you and reinventing know. himself through what Steve Dahl was doing in Chicago. Steve Dahl, we hired him at W4 in Detroit. Uh, he was hugely successful. Then he went to Chicago, and Steve's replacement at W4 actually, we brought in uh, Howard Stern. So Howard actually replaced Steve and kind of, and was told, hey, you know, the Steve Dahl guy is doing a certain style. Can you do this? And he, mm. he did a pretty good job. What years was Steve mm. Dahl popular in Chicago? Uh, seventy nine, eighty was mm. you know the real peak. Yep. He's still there. Jesus. Oh, yeah. you know, I know. We met him a couple yeah, years ago. He, came he, he had a two year peak. 
No, no, he, he, <laughs> and he's still that there. That was just like <laughs> the super years. He's still there. I mean, he's, he's a great yeah, but it was a, a slow downslide ever since <laughs> oh then. God. Wow. I thought you were going to say, well, from 79 through 90, you know, Two he was pretty good. Peak, and then <laughs> 79 to 80. Yeah, I mean, those are the, the, the hot days. You know. Two years of the roller coaster going. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's just. <laughs> The rest of the ride. Yeah, Howard doesn't Eesh. like telling those stories, but no. uh, they're out there. And, uh, yeah, Steve Dahl was doing a lot of that stuff way before Howard. Yeah. Do you know how many bad uh, two-man morning shows with a giggling newswoman there are out there? Oh. Any idea? Yeah, quite a few. It's unbelievable. We, we had Rick few of them Steve on our the very morning. show. Yeah, we, we actually... Uh, had our listeners uh, put their phone to the radio and Ugh. had quite a few a few of them on on the show. Yeah, just play a lot of air checks. Some of them. We yeah, well, them uh, you know, maybe we'll do that bit uh, later this I week. I love that one. Yeah, we'll do that bit this yeah. later this week. Can I say come in? <laughs> every road gig I've done where you got to do radio and they have those zoo crews and that chick every time the chick ruins the vibe. Yeah, she's the one who puts the moral brakes on. Whoa, hey, come on now! It's just like you just gotta ruin everything. And people say it's a good thing. It keeps the guys in check. Keeps you in check. It's a oh. balance. Well, Lee's yeah, uh, balance. Yeah. Lee's been a consultant for many, many years. Uh, Lee, you know, they've been trying to get a chick on our program for years. Not mm -hmm. XM, obviously, but uh, over the years, it's been suggested to us that it would be good balance. to to have some kind of balance. a you female perspective on the show. To the show. You know, yeah. in DC at XM headquarters, we have a cliche buzzer. Yeah, eh, that would that would that break, break the buzzer. Broke the buzzer. Yeah, well, that is get, definitely I mean, a cliche. Anthony oh. and I look at this radio show. It's kind of like a fantasy world, you know. Uh, and guys get to peek into this. So if there's girls on the show, we want them doing, you know, slutty things. Or as Elo says, a cliche. Yeah. A cliche. <laughs> a cliche. <laughs> I'm all for having a woman come on and do something regularly, as long as she does it with that bat. That's all I care about. <laughs> <laughs> Read the news all you want, stupid. But do I it with that there. We have a big star on hold. He's been waiting for like 20 minutes. So yes. You guys Good. really do have to go. I'm out of here. Oh, who is it? Uh, Lewis Black. Oh, I oh, love he, him. He played at our million sub uh, subscriber thing God, in D.C. Funny. He was unbelievable. He is so good. You love know, Lewis. Thanks like for bringing back a bad memory. Lines, I had XM back then, and I'm driving through the middle of Florida listening to you guys have such a great time. <laughs> well, here you are. All depressed. Oh, was, yeah, because we, we were still a good year away from signing with XM at that point. We were unemployable. Yep. Yep. <sighs> So it's Lee Abrams, everyone, and uh, Elo, of course. Thank Where's you, Lewis? gentlemen. And well, we got to take a break now, so someone's got to talk to Lewis and calm him down. So that'll be fun. good luck. Okay, the guys, we're here. What? I'm here. Don't take a break, Ben. Screaming and yelling. Yeah, got to take him now. Maybe take he's in the airport or something. He's short that on could time. Be. Look at Ben freaking out. What? He's always short on time. He's I, always I, freaking out. Ben, saying pick him up. I, I don't know if that's what he's saying. Ben? Ben, what oh are you saying? God, you are freaking <laughs> Look, he is losing he's his mind. He's ready to throw the phone out the window. He's <laughs> losing his mind. What does that mean when you... He, he's making the sign, pick up the phone. He's pissed. All right, why don't you guys stay in for our Lewis yeah. Black interview? Okay. Where's my coffee? Lewis! Yeah, I, uh, the reason we had that big party was just to taunt you. <laughs> I, I called up. I said, you know, let's just fake this thing <laughs> and pretend like we're having a great time because I know that, uh, you know, I know that he'll be wandering around in his car and really upset. Depressed. <laughs> yeah, you don't give a crap about me. Where, Lewis. where are you, Lewis? I'm in a studio somewhere here in New York. Oh, in New York. Oh, he is in New York. You son of a bitch. You <laughs> couldn't stop <laughs> by. Guys, guys this let's not even talk about this, okay? This is, this I <laughs> am in... Shut up! <laughs> I'm in book prison, got it? Book prison. I'm in book prison. My life is not my own. Okay, you know the deal. We, Hello? We know the deal. We are one of many radio shows you will be talking to from this room today. Now we're just one of many, Lewis? This is what happened between the time that oh. we used to do a show and the new show. Oh, for Christ. Lewis no. got too big for us. Remember when oh, we yeah, were like the only big. show Lewis did? I look, if it was up to me, you'd be the show. I'm in book prison. <laughs> Lewis, There's this was the big. only radio show you used to do. No, I did others. I snuck around. <laughs> I snuck around. I you about. cheated on us. I did. I went from I went from morning zoo to morning zoo. <laughs> well, now he's a uh, he. He is getting a little a little big these days. Well, uh, I see him. Uh, you know, I'd rather. Yeah. Well, I, uh, no. I'd rather remain in obscurity. <laughs> I, 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 Lewis, I think we need to get you arrested again. Uh, oh, your oh, your head's getting a little too big. I oh, think. Yeah, my head is really it's massive. <laughs> Now, now you're 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 selling your book. That's it. I'm whoring, you idiot. <laughs> Got it. It's called slut time. 
Tell us about your book, Louis. No, I'm not going to tell you. I want to hear what no, the book you, is I'm about. I'm not going to tell you anything. I really don't want to hear about it. I know I don't you don't want to hear about, about it. <laughs> I, don't, I could care less about your film. Oh, you won't give it a read? No, it's about my time with Norton. It's called, it's called Me and Jim <laughs> and our time together in jail, and then I turn it into a larger fantasy where we go on and, and, and create a prison break. Do you talk about the jail thing or no? No, that comes in the next book. Oh, <laughs> yes, I, I won't be writing, and the only reason I'm not going to write is so that I don't take this abuse from you bad. <laughs> abuse? We're the ones sitting here in a studio uh, without Louis Black sitting in front of us. Oh, yeah, what a treat that is. What's the, what's the, what's the book about? It's about how I ended up with my twisted point of view. Oh, there you go. So it's kind of like uh, you growing up. and Yeah, it's a memoir, only I don't have a memory. <laughs> it's getting uh, very good reviews, Lewis. And i got to tell you, I was in Boston, but you've gotten so big. You were in Boston. We were in Boston. Right. I wanted to see you at the Orpheum Theater, but you know what? You have so many people in between me and you now, I, 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 I couldn't even get a hold of you to get a ticket. Oh, you are so full of shit. <laughs> The level of, the, when the shit pours out of your ears, I can smell it from here. Uh, Lewis enjoying this satellite radio with this uh, curse freedom. Oh, yeah, well, you know, hello, I've waited all my life for it, you know, that's all. You all, must be, All my life. You must be enjoying the success and probably the financial reward that goes with it. Are you, are you donating your money to a lot of your socialist causes, Lewis? I certainly am. I'm actually giving money to Lebanon. <laughs> Lebanon? <laughs> Very good, well, I know. Was Yemen, that was the place. Yemen, yes. Yemen, that was it. Well, I screwed that up. I was always right about uh, Yemen, by the way. You were right about it. You laughed Yemen. at me, and I was right. Nope, you, you nailed most of it. You've, you've practically nailed everything. <laughs> I don't know why you're not in charge of foreign policy. Thank you. They should put me in charge. What do you mean? Are you serious? You couldn't get into that show? That's bullshit. I couldn't figure out how to get a hold of you, Lewis. And I, 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 I really. I, they said you were coming to. I asked. They said you were coming to town on Monday, and then I. And they said. I, I, they said you were coming in on Monday. I said, well, I won't be here. And then and I didn't know you guys would be up there over the weekend. I, I came in early. Are you going to play a New York show? I'm not kidding. I really want to see this. I'm going to. I'm going to be playing Alice Tully Hall. I'll get you tickets. All right, right on. I'll be at that show then. No, I will. I'll put it aside. It's next Saturday, next Friday, or Friday, next Friday. I will definitely be there, Lord. You got it. And I'll get some pro. For uh, Anthony too, but uh, he, unless there's gambling, he doesn't like to watch. It. <laughs> yeah, Lewis doesn't. Uh, Lewis, uh, Anthony doesn't really uh, leave the house anymore. He's he's changed. <laughs> no, I came to see Lewis. Uh, at, where was that? Mohegan. Mohegan Sun. Yeah, Mohegan Sun. But I, you know, spoke a couple of minutes and then had to run off to the blackjack table. Yeah, he was gone. <laughs> I was out of there in two seconds. <laughs> Thanks for the show, Lewis. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Yeah, I gotta go make some money. <laughs> Way to keep in touch with old friends, Anthony. At least I saw him. Right. I saw he was going to be there. I called up his room, asked for a free ticket, and, and then, I, uh, I got which, it, and which then he I... got for me, and uh, went to play some blackjack. Are you calling from a green room right now, Lewis? I don't know what it is. Are you are you are you doing a satellite thing? Or are you going it's a on satellite someone? thing? It's a continuous. I just continue to oh talk. Oh my God, Lewis! Oh, okay, I thought maybe you were waiting to go on someone else's it, show. If you would have no, came in, no, listen, assholes, that I wouldn't. Do. <laughs> <laughs> Got it? Just, All right, just so you know, I would sit around in a green room to go on hooky pookies. Our, our listeners are, are writing show. in and saying that you're in someone's green room waiting to go on his show. They're insane, okay? Uh, you're, you're calling our listeners insane? How dare you? Oh, man. yeah, right. Yeah, like, yeah look. Okay. They're, they're not going to be happy with you. Uh, you know, who is now? Lewis. The worst thing you could do is become successful. Then they go, oh, boy. You see, I knew he was a prick. Sell out. Yep, exactly. Hey, Lewis, we're in the uh, July 2005 issue of Hustler magazine. Yeah. Oh, very good. A hustler. A huge, huge interview with your pals, Opie and Anthony. What about Norton? Yeah, well, Norton gets a little mention here and there. And he's a got little. He actually gets a picture in the in the article. That's that's a big improvement. We like to make believe he doesn't really exist, but uh, oh. it got through the cracks, and uh, he made Hustler Magazine with us. Very nice. Now, Norton's blowing up. Everyone knows that. Yeah. How are you doing, Jim? I'm okay, man. How's everything? Obviously doing very well. The same old. It's still the same. Nothing yeah. changes. You're still miserable? Yeah, of course. Why? Why would I be happy? Well, because Britney Spears is having a baby, and if that's not the third sign that the, the fucking devil is coming, I don't know what is. Well, you had to know that was coming, though, that oh, white trash. Yeah, but you know, that's where you have laws. That's where you go, uh-uh, no, you can't have a baby. We're building a wall. She's going to destroy that uh, hot body of hers. That's the biggest problem. That supple, young body of hers. Oh, yeah. yeah, like she didn't destroy it by standing next to the devil. 
You know what's great about that, Lewis? There's nothing really going on in the world, uh, you know. So we so we reserve the front page for Britney Spears yeah. Yeah. and her pregnancy because yeah. you know that there's n you don't want to use that space for anything else going on in the world. Well, either that or you know, or, or to find out what's in the president's iPod. The president has an iPod. You didn't hear this one? Uh -uh. No. Oh my god! Like us, Lewis. Oh, you guys will love. You got to go through this. Yeah. Um, go online because you'll go on for weeks. Oh really? <laughs> Where is that? It's Where... got to be. It was in yesterday, all of yesterday, it was in yesterday's Times. Oh, uh, we don't read that paper. Times. No, we, we, just calm down. There are other places to get it. <laughs> <laughs> the Times? Is that a newspaper here in New York? Yeah. Lewis, you're, you're, too, you're, you're a big star these days, so let me tell you what happens with the New York Times every day on this program. You actually read a cover to cover, I'm sure. No, I don't, because you, you actually develop a hemorrhoid. <laughs> all right, well, we use uh, the New York Times when the girls come in here to get naked because we got a bunch of faggots that work with us. So we have to, you know, cover all the windows uh, so they don't get a peek of nudity. No. And we end up using the New York Times. It's perfect. perfect. It's perfect to cover these we windows. We have the New York Post. Why do we need uh, the yeah, Times? the Post is very informative. You know that. Yeah, it's the only paper with the guts to print its own news. That's uh, right. They, uh, but the, um, the thing was is that he has an iPod. It has Alan Jackson on it. it yeah. It's got uh, My Sharona. My oh, Sharona? My yep. God. Uh there's a, and, and, and it's just a, a what's it, not uh, Clint, whatever. Clint uh, Black. I don't even know these guys' names. Clint Black. Well, I'm going to help you out because I, I, I got, I, I got yeah. the story in front of me. It's uh, uh, heavy on traditional country singers like George Jones, Alan Jackson, yeah. and Kenny Chesney. No, that's Chesney. Kenny Chesney. Uh, whatever. <laughs> he has selections by Van Morrison. Uh, like Any stuff on the Panzerfaust list? <laughs> yeah. Brown Eyed Girl. <laughs> listen to? Brown Eyed Girl is a Bush favorite. He likes John Fogarty's center field. Yeah, which is uh, actually creates nausea when you. <laughs> <laughs> and it uh, it goes on and on. We're gonna have to read this article here. Mm -hmm. I never thought he was so. Uh, he has my Sharona technology. though. Yeah, of course. Why not? Why not have uh, the answer to a trivia question? He probably that probably uh, holds a spot in his heart when he used to do uh, cocaine. Yeah, that's and I said it also. Sharona. He probably has on its. Uh, you know, like a you know one of those things. You are the master of the universe. You are the master of your own. Thing. Oh, really? Like a motivational? Oh, I'm uh, sure, it's on there. Speakers. <laughs> he is just. He is reached. I think it's epic insanity. Well, you voted for him. Oh yeah, I voted for him. <laughs> I raced out to vote for him. <laughs> I stood there. I went into the thing and I said the first thing I asked before I went in the voting booth this time is if there is a lever that said kill me now. <laughs> and I also, I'll tell you this. If anybody out there is inspired by Bush or, or if you were inspired by Kerry, you're the son of a bitch that when I was in high school, when the principal spoke, you wept openly. Oh, really? Yes. All right. That didn't go over very well. Though. Yeah, that one was uh, not 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 your A material. That was. Uh, uh, Lewis is saving it for the next. Uh, yeah, fish. sure. Yeah. Wow, you guys have just become creepy. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> when are you going to hang with us, Lewis? I'm coming in in May. Are you really? Yeah. Okay, good. By the way, uh, the phones have exploded, and uh, they're, they're, a lot of people saying you just killed at Avalon in uh, Boston. It was good. It was fun. I, I love seeing your stand-up. I haven't seen you in a while. I can't wait to see you in, here in yeah, New York. So. I do it now in a prom dress. And that's Ooh, really help. Lewis, you should have came in and did all your satellite interviews from our studio. We could have had a lot of fun with this today. Well, I didn't know that. We would have helped you out. Son of a bitch. Well, nobody tells me things I'm telling you. I'm, I've got my trainers around me. I, I see that. There's too many people around you these There's days. There's hundreds. Are you losing That's touch? Insulation. Are you losing I'm, touch with the common man, Lewis? No, I'm not losing touch with the common man. How do you lose touch with the common man when you live in New York? you got to be almost blind. <laughs> you say, you like uh, living in New York still? You, yeah. You've always had a problem with New York. No, I like living here. Yeah. I love living here. How's the love life, Lewis? It's, uh, I don't, you know, I don't have the energy. <laughs> I, what, what, but you know, you guys used to have those pills for me. Right, right. We, we had a lot of dick pills advertising on the show. Vortex 9. <laughs> we got to get that back again. Herbal goat cheese. Remember the stuff that we used to uh, advertise? Was oh, my God. Horny goat weed. Horny, horny, horny goat, goat weed. That was it. That was my personal favorite. From right. the Phuket mountains of china <laughs> <laughs> we had to read this crap like we really believe too oh hey and if they come back tomorrow oh, you'll yeah. hear it again tomorrow what about uh, uh lewis do you remember the one for sweet release <laughs> yeah 
<laughs> yeah, that flavored your batch. So the girls uh, actually got a flavor of banana or cherry or vanilla. Got a nice little surprise. When you splooged in their mouth. <laughs> uh, bonus. <laughs> bonus. I used to use it as a whipped topping. <laughs> <laughs> you ran out of once you ran out of whipped topping. I used to scarf some of that. Yeah, you just down a few of the pills and jack off on your <laughs> donut. Off. Yeah, either that or my ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Very good. All, All right, right, Lewis, we're uh, we're gonna let you be. All right, listen, guys, I will be in <laughs> May. I'm gonna talk to uh, Schmucky, and we're gonna work this out. What's All the right. What's the next radio station that is fortunate enough to have Lewis Black on? Huh? I have no idea. You don't even know? They just hit you no, with it? Literally, it's just a bump, 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 you know. And do you make believe you listen to every program? No, there's certain people that I've talked to, so it's, you know, like, uh, what was it, uh, the first one this morning, Tom Bernard in Minneapolis. Well, right? I hear he's a pretty cool guy. He is cool. He's very good. You know, there's actually these really solid morning people. Yeah. And then there are these people who should just be exterminated. I mean, you know, Norton knows all of them. <laughs> yeah, he's been on a few. I think you're talking to a couple of them. Oh, shut up. But, <laughs> but for other reasons you want us uh, out of the picture. <laughs> oh, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> no, you know what? I'm going to bring it out to Kelly Hall, and I'm going to end the show by killing you. Lewis, I was telling a, a great Lewis Black story the other day, not on the radio, but um, when you got arrested for the voyeur bus, the teen voyeur bus thing, Yeah. I stressed out so bad. Do you remember I was, like, in the in the office? Oh, my God. Yeah, you were up. I was in the office, like, and it, it, I looked like I was on like a like a four day coke binge, waiting for you guys to get out of jail. I felt really bad and stuff. Well, don't worry because Jim and I they cut us huge checks. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, and made up for all of the suffering. And you can look up the articles online to the new listeners because it's a legendary story now. But uh, it was the Teen Voyeur bus and Norton and Lewis Black. We we barely knew uh, either guy really. You know, you guys would just be coming friends of the program, and you got arrested for us and with another 12 people or whatever, and I'm stressing out like crazy. Oh, yeah, you were a rat. And I, I, and I think you were doing the Daily Show at this point, so I'm yeah. like, oh, my God, we got, it, we got this guy arrested. He's never going to do our show again. I mean, I, we did know you pretty well, I guess, what it comes down to. Anyway, you come in, and I'm just like, uh, I'm like apologizing, uh, apologizing to Lewis. I'm like, Lewis, I'm so sorry. I, I didn't know it was going to go down this way. And you're like... Why are you apologizing? You just made my career. I'll, I'll talk about this shit for the next year on stage. <laughs> I actually am the one to convince Lewis to go. We were debating do we go on this bus, and uh, yeah. Lewis is like, I don't know. And I'm like, what are you, naked teenagers? What are we, fucking idiots? <laughs> do it. Aww. See, you get roped in with those nude teens. And you didn't really know us, so you thought we were in control. You, oh, you, I, 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 no, I, I knew you guys pretty well. I just thought, you know, how could, what, what could, you know, we, and I've been wrong. on the bus once already. Right. Yeah, that's before. true. I, I was on the bus the first time. Yeah. Right? It's like, what could possibly go wrong? Yeah, really, really. It's New York, you know, and there's a law, and the, and the law's on our side. <laughs> <laughs> the worst part of that whole thing, man, was not smoking. That was the worst part of that entire ordeal. It wasn't oh, the, yeah, the, it wasn't the like disease or the roaches. Smoker. And and the captain turning to Norton when Norton says, you know, the good thing is, is you know, that Lewis and I are going to be in there together, so there's, uh, we each have somebody to cover our back. And the guy looked at us and said, are you guys stupid? <laughs> Do you really think you're going to protect each other? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just yeah. laugh at us. Yeah, that was after like nine hours when we were starting to crack. I could see Lewis <laughs> jumping in to help Jim when some... Wait, some guy that's been in the weight room in prison for uh, a few years starts trying to assault Jimmy. Yeah, and Lewis will jump Lewis right will in. Lewis will jump in with that like attacking twitch finger and try to <laughs> push the man off of me. Get off my friend! <laughs> yeah, he's poking, him pointing the, at him, poking him in the chest. That's gonna do a lot. I, act I actually saw that 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 guy. I think it was a lieutenant or a captain. The guy that sat down and actually let us smoke. Yeah. Uh, I saw him in a deli around the corner from my house, really? and, I, and I said the one thing you should always say to a cop. I went, Hey, do you remember me? Which never puts a cop on guard at all. <laughs> no. Um, and I explained who I was. He's like, oh, man, you guys got such a shitty deal. We had nothing. He actually yeah. admitted that. He's like, yeah, that was a bad deal. We never should have arrested you. Uh, we had nothing on you guys. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. Well, when you yeah. piss off the mayor of a city, you know, things happen. Yep. That things was happen. abuse of the law is what that was. Hell, yeah. And I think he mentioned you and said he was a fan. He was like, yeah, I see Lewis on The Daily Show. He didn't want to talk about me. He wanted to talk about your yeah, Lewis. marketing career. Lewis, that Daily Show, man, I mean, it is just great. It really is. It's just, gotten very good. It's just one of the best things on TV. I enjoy it every night, and uh, and you're just kicking ass on that program. It's fun. Lewis's segment on that. Very funny. Love it, love it, love it. Well, right. I'm, I'm going to see you guys in May. All right, Lewis. I'm going to call Ben, and uh, we'll work it out, and I'll see you shortly. All right, sounds great. Thank thanks, you, Lewis. Hey, guys, thanks a lot what, for being kind. What, what's the name of the book again, seriously? Nothing's Sacred. Nothing's Sacred by Lewis Black. It's getting great reviews. All right, uh... 
And I, you've got tickets for Alice Tully. There'll be two under your name. Uh, what do I do? Talk to. Well, we'll figure it out off air. All right. I'll, I'll get you. Thank you, Lewis. Okay. Bye, 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 sweetie. There he goes, Lewis Black. Everyone. Nice. There it is. Well, we just talked for like an hour and a half. We got to eat cereal really? and take dumps and. Oh, well, is that what we're gonna do now? I need coffee. Why? Did, why wasn't I involved in the latest coffee you order? You were busy chatting with Lee. You didn't get coffee. You didn't get coffee. Lee is just out of his mind. I yeah. love the guy. He's a psychopath. Is he gone for the day now? They're going to be back later. Yeah, proving that they are making another deal. There's something going so on. So go online and buy some stupid XM uh, uh, shares today. <laughs> Where's the other guy? Can we get the uh, Ed in here? That's that does not, sound a lot better, by the way. That's huh? not inside trading. I just know when Elo is in New York with a Lee Abrams or a Hugh Panero, something's going down and you should buy shares. I don't know. Isn't that inside? No. Because he just went on the radio. Yeah. It's not exactly a secret. We no, didn't... because Elo swears that he's here because, you know, the studio was tweaked for the last uh, two weeks. Why? What happened? He's got a conference call. He's got a conference call with who? I don't know. Are there Amber Alert people? <laughs> Who's he talking to? <laughs> That's psycho. <laughs> <laughs> All right, whatever. They're telling me to shut up, but I know Elo's not here for us. Yeah, who cares? No, of course. I know that. That's obvious. I don't care about anything. It's, Eric's here no. doing other stuff. I mean, Chauncey called and told me himself. <laughs> <laughs> that loser. All Eek. right. Oh, we have to play the... Uh, we have to play this again. What's that? Oh, by the way, can I mention one more thing before we go to break? I, you guys got some really nice press in Boston that I forgot to mention. Because um, I know there was an interview, which... Um, yeah. Wow, what was that? Whoa. Yeah. Oh, oh. Up. there was an interview at the end we did in Boston. Uh huh. I kind of didn't want to do it. I said, again, I'm sitting these things out for whatever. Syndicated set. This is the, in Boston. Sean uh, McCarthy. We, how long did you talk to him for? About uh, 15, 20 minutes right after our Bill's Bar mm -hmm. show. And I came in for probably the last 10 minutes. What an article. I mean, oh, really? Just give me a half hour to get through this. I don't All mean, right. Can... Hotline. They're back. Oh, does that mean he spelled back with a lot of A's? A lot of Bunch A's. of A's. Bunch of A's. Okay. Good. I'm smart. Syndicated satellite radio team, Opie and Anthony, celebrated their first broadcast on basic XM radio yesterday with a live show in the shadow of Fenway Park. Boston's always been huge for us, Anthony Kuman says. Kuman. Yeah, C-U-M-I-N. Yeah, Kuman. C-U-M-I-N? Yeah. The morning duo. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm a spice. That's not Kuman. Yeah. That's Cummin. 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 Anthony Cummin said. Yeah. Anthony, you were coming as you were talking <laughs> to the coming. reporter? Jesus. I was coming. Were you whacking like a monkey in front of the guy? Cummin. The morning. Oh, that's that slang way of uh, spelling coming. Yeah, there is an apostrophe at the end. Yeah, <laughs> coming. The, end. <laughs> the morning duo dismissed from AAF after April Fool's hoax and blah, 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 has been available only to premium XM satellite subscribers before yesterday. Opie and Anthony, along with sidekick <laughs> Jim oh, Norton. Oh, Jesus. That's actually fine. And their assorted characters course, were put on it's another. very accurate. It certainly is. <laughs> and uh, Which is basically bullying. Patrice shit on me one time. You're a sidekick! <laughs> about. Oh, oh. About and it's about tough crowd. Yeah, he, he was really just right. And um, <laughs> I really am. I really am a man who just has never made a stake in anything. I am. I'm fucking Kenny Coattails. Believe me, I'm oh, aware of that. Kenny Coattails. Here's what I am. I'm as the picture's ready to be snapped. <clears throat> put my head up in it. That's what oh, I am. You know, I'm not even going to argue that point because no, I'm zelling. Because when Anthony and I, let's go over really fast. We're on top of the radio world and we get fired. Our careers are destroyed in one day. One stupid yeah. idea. Okay. Now, you guys didn't get to live our lives. Anthony and I went away. We uh, went our own ways for a while. And every once in a while, we come back to say hi to our old friends. Sure. So we'd be invited to, like, roasts and comedy memorials and, and such, right? Sure. I remember being at one of these roasts in the middle of the village somewhere. Yeah, the Boston Comedy Club. Boston Comedy Club. They invite us. Aunt and I saying hi probably for the first time in six months. Sure. Six yeah. months, all of a sudden, we're... Having a little reunion in the back of the place. Uh -huh. And Norton's there. And at this point, Norton has moved on with his career. He's doing Tough Crowd with Colin Quinn. Yep. And there's his old pals that gave him one of his bigger breaks in the back of the room. Where's Norton sitting? Oh, not with us. Right next to Colin Quinn. Next to Colin Quinn, who <laughs> Norton probably hasn't seen since <laughs> Tough Crowd ended. I saw that fucking balloon-headed zero last night. You did? Yeah, and his awful haircut. Balloon-headed. <laughs> he has a 58-pound skull, and he's on the road now. You have no more shows, stupid. I don't need to talk to you anymore. Oh, God. Believe me. But you... All I do is nod and smile at Geraldo when I see him now. Oh. Colin's out. Geraldo's in. You but... are cruel. But you, uh, you know, you're talking about jumping on people's coattails. I 
I remember that. Listen, I well, said look, before I, us, dude. Come on. Before us, he was with Dice. Right. You were riding the Dice train I was, around I was, the country. I certainly was. You are. That is a talent, my friend. I, I don't look down at you for that. And, and what was really you funny... You were able to hop from one to another a, as they peak. I'm a toad with mediocre talent and great legs. <laughs> I, can, I can leap really far. Even the pilot that I did, not my pilot, right. Louis C.K. But you're there. I sneak right in like Zelig. Ching! Picture taken. There he is again. He's there. I, I know that guy. Man who just can't make his own steak. Just watch what other men do and somehow take your fucking fat body and be a part of it. What was so funny about that roast, Anthony and I were in the back row and everyone was commenting how you were sitting right next to Colin Quinn. Oh, yeah. They did. And hanging us out to dry. What what, could you at least, Boston, could you just look at them? Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, Boss gets up to the podium and starts doing his act and uh, yeah, just really laid into us. Could you look at him? It's not like you guys have to be up for work in the morning. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, we got killed that day, and as well as we should have, and it was a very funny night. But uh, and they all commented that you were sitting very close to Colin and ignoring us. But uh, really fast, Rich Voss was on Dennis Miller last night. I, oh shit! Oh I talked. my god, Hill. Did he good? Good. Oh, yeah. And looked like Dennis Miller was uh, really enjoying. Uh, Voss, they did a little sit down thing, five minutes sit down. That's thing. great. Wow. Voss said he was flying out to LA for that. No, he good killed man. last night. He did great. Well, him and Bonnie, I think, have a show coming out because they're, they're obviously they're dating, and, and uh, you know it's on some Comedy Central's working fiance. on something with their fiance. Their fiance. So anyway, getting back, is, was that all you wanted to say? Yeah, but I also have to, I have to, I have to stand up for myself here before the, you know the whackbag people fucking hang me out to dry. The reason I wasn't sitting with my old pals was because I was one of the roasters, and as is traditional, you have to sit. There's a little placard with your oh, name on it. Of course, Jimmy. With all the roasters, and I yeah, was one of the roasters. And had I not be. I still would have sat next to Colin, but on that particular night, I had a good reason to not sit with my pal Dopey. And, and I guess, I guess it was the the, the concrete wall that present, uh, prevented you from coming to say hi before and but after. Dude, those. I nodded from across the room. I'm like, oh, and I, that, they, they, they're around you there know, if you want to go see them. Dopey was complaining about that, and I had to turn for, to him and say, you know, it's the way it is. We have to take care of ourselves now. We can't depend on Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know the line. I turned yeah, to remember myself. I want to say good Santa good Fever. Was when he went in prison. Oh, oh shit. And they can't depend, right. to, shit, yeah. depend on uh, Paulie anymore. That's the same situation. We you were in what? the joint. We had to just make do, sell our drugs, whatever we need to do to get through. Another thing I was thinking about the other day, it's time for me to watch Goodfellas again. Yeah. I the, watch that probably every month, I know, whether I need to or not. But those movies, you know, those movies just kind of <laughs> cycle through your life, and yeah. then you go, you look at your DVDs and realize, oh my God, I have to watch Goodfellas again. Yep. It's been too long. Mm -hmm. Caddyshack's another one of those movies. Yeah, that one I'm due. I'm you're, due to you're watch due Caddyshack. You're due for a Caddyshack view. Well, since we spoke to Spalding, it's sort of like I got I got to watch it again. You know who I met from Goodfellas? Uh, he actually owns a restaurant in L.A. that I ate at. Uh, my manager knows him. He's the guy. He's like, you want to see helicopters? That guy that's really yeah yeah. He's like um, he's like uh you know. The the guy that sold the drugs in the uh, hotel room. That is what he did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a, a wow. restaurant owner in L.A. And I didn't recognize him. Like, yeah, that's the guy from the Phyllis who did the helicopters. Oh, yeah. How cool is that? Yeah, it's kind of a weird. Just anybody that was in that goddamn movie. Bob Golub. The com you know Golub was in it, right? The comedian. Yeah, what two part? niggas just stole my truck. Uh, that was him. It's Bob Golub. Yeah. Wow. And oh, yeah. Uh, how do I know that name? He's a comedian. He's friends with Voss. He lives in L.A. He's been around for years. Everybody knows Bob. Okay. And Lorraine Bracco was as good as always. She's she's the only one that could ruin the Sopranos. She's terrible. She really is. They were going to find it, Henry! That, that's good. <laughs> Yuck. They threw me out of the car! Hoo-hoo! <laughs> Hoo-hoo! You have a whore living upstairs! <laughs> There's a whore in your building! Oh, what a mess. What a whiny mess. All right, we really have to take a break. Oh, oh damn Opie. it. Oh, I, I mean, We have to take a break! <laughs> I'm making brown dots in my underwear as we oh, speak. God <laughs> damn it. I got some poking going on at this point. Oh, <laughs> is the turtle now coming out? Oh. I, I think I got bingo in my underwear. <laughs> <laughs> like a bingo marker? <laughs> Every time he shifts or lifts his cheek, the underwear crumples and the little dot ends up somewhere else. <laughs> I think oh. I got bingo across, yeah. Oh, God, that's disgusting. <laughs> hey, I'm proud of myself. I made that one up on the fly. That was a good you. one. Oh, thanks. I appreciate it. Let's stop and acknowledge mm. that. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I usually go with the old, looks like a used shoe shine rag, but yeah. I was able to come up with something new. Thank you. 
All right. Uh, we yeah, we have to break. When we come back, Danny, the intern, still working for us. Hey guys, good to see you again. Sorry we didn't really acknowledge you this morning. Oh yeah. Uh, Danny and Nathaniel still here. Oh, everyone's still here. Yeah, we didn't lose any. Travis and, and Ricky. Wow. He said that I thought they hired new people. And, uh, of course, Derek. And uh, I guess there was a lot of controversy when we were away. What? Where what they, kind of controversy? They were pretty much going to call the FBI while we were gone. Uh, Swear to God. Problem? It was, uh, uh, well, I don't want to give it away. Because yeah. it, it's unbelievable. Someone handed me that disc. I, I didn't even look at the pictures. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> There was something that was given to us that has just been laying around. Yeah. That someone discovered and really freaked out, called Washington. We're Stop ready to it. call the authorities. It was a whole thing that went on. Mm. Really? Stop. Yeah. yeah, we'll get into that next. All right. Wow. Somebody found a gay intern? Oh, wait. <laughs> Oh my God, dude! <laughs> I'm gonna call my lawyer. <laughs> All right, let's. Sorry, you raised a faggot. <laughs> let's calm down. We have no idea. <laughs> if you there's was. someone gay in your studio, <laughs> there's a homo in your building. We have no idea what he was, and quite frankly, upstairs on the fifth floor. <laughs> quite frankly, we don't care. That's right. If he is, that's that's gonna be tougher on your golf buddies. Hey, that's the pole smoker we've been hearing about. If yep, he's... that's him. If he is, good for him. Right. All right. I flushed the blazer down the <laughs> toilet. They would have found it. Maybe you and Monica Lewinsky's father can play golf and trade how your kid sucks dick tips. Stupid. <laughs> Look, we have no idea oh, what that kid was up to. What, what do you mean, kid? What? We have no idea. <laughs> All right. I don't even know who you're talking about. You should be proud of yourself. Someone put a cock in your face, you took it like a man. <laughs> yeah. As we go to break, once again, Anthony, Howard Stern talking about the company he wanted to go to. Oh, here we go. But he, this stupid idiot was uh, stubborn and made uh, the worst decision of his career. If you're planning a road trip this weekend, it's time to take XM Satellite Radio along for the ride. XM gives you 100% commercial-free music. It's the ultimate playlist with channels for album rock, alternative, heavy metal, hip-hop, unsigned bands, blues, jazz. There's an XM channel for everyone in the family, including the biggest names in news, sports, talk, and comedy. All in digital quality sound for less than 10 bucks a month. No wonder it's the most listened to satellite radio service. The XM Roadie.